What's happening Foundation Nation? Today we're gonna to learn how to throw an upshot. Okay, so we're out here, Santa Cruz. Beautiful, beautiful sight. It's cold. Sounds. It's so cold, it's windy. I got Ezra here with me today, Judah on the camera. We're gonna be trying to do this more, so let us know in the comments down below or by liking this video if you wanna see more videos on Foundation uh, with me and Ezra kind of doing either some tutorials, maybe some fun challenges while we're out on the road. We're gonna to try to sprinkle this in for you guys. But today, we're gonna to do upshots. Why? Well, because- you suck at them. <laughs> well, I was gonna say, because we're about to play Masters Cup and there's gonna be a lot of kind of 100 to 200 foot upshots. Are you saying every um, tee shot is actually just an upshot? Is that what so, to say? I mean, there's like four or five. There's a couple of them. There's, there's a couple, couple of them that are very upshotty. Um, so the, the first thing I want to, because I feel like this is probably one thing that has translated the most for me from ultimate to disc golf is the notion that the throw, the upshot, like actual throw is very different than your normal forehand or your normal backhand. The best way of kind of getting a grasp on what I mean is if I was going to give you a football, a baseball and tell you throw it as far as you can, you would get your whole body into it and you'd get a huge wind up and you'd like launch it, right? Now, if I, were to t if I was to tell you, okay, I, I want you to throw this 20 feet or 30 feet and I was just, you know, 30 feet away from you and I was like, all right, throw it here. You wouldn't do that. Most people wouldn't go big full body and then like slow throw. They would probably just go like this, little wrist flip, right? And that is the same thing. A lot of people I see struggle with upshots, especially on the forehand side. They try to like decelerate. They try to do like their normal forehand motion and then like throw soft. By, well, a, lot it's, of, by a lot of people, you mean me. Well, no. Shots, I can take it, it's fine. I can a, take lot, it. a lot of people do it. And what ends up happening is one, it's very, very hard to control distance doing that. And then it's also very hard to get spin on the disc because you don't feel like you can really attack it with your wrist or it's gonna come out too fast. So you end up throwing stuff that's like not that much spin, kind of wobble, and you struggle with your distance control. So for forehand and backhand, I think if you're struggling on the upshots, the easiest way is just trying to condense the motion as much as possible. So for forehand, what that looks like is you're just gonna turn sideways to your target and instead of doing your normal reach back or your full uh, shoulder turn or anything like that, you're really just gonna focus more on the wrist and your elbow pop to generate the power. And that is all that's gonna happen. You still wanna be aggressive when you snap and get the wrist snap to get spin on the disc so that it way it actually does fly fairly straight, but you're not doing your normal motion. You also probably don't need to you know, walk up into it, do an X step, and reversely for the backhand, it's gonna be very similar as well. And this is something you can talk about actually, about how you used to do standstill upshot backhands. Well, it's a process, yeah. But yeah, I mean, basically everything like he said, you know, if you do a full reach back and try to try to get the disc to go at a certain speed here, you know, in order to have it go that, that speed, you have to decel decelerate, which is a really hard to, it's really difficult to get the speed right. Whereas if you keep it right here and then just accelerate the whole way, it's a lot, it's a lot easier to get the, the right thing. So also something that I think about too, um, it's easy to like try to rotate back and then that, that adds speed and power too. If you think of like Brian Earhart or certain players like that, the upshots are basically just an extension of like a spin putt. So instead yeah. of like flowing the disc, I'll kind of just right here on the kind of just, it's almost like a spin putt. So that's something that helps me kind of, that's a good, kind of yeah. slow it down too. So yeah, you just play here and then. I mean, yeah. I started doing this yesterday, so. Yeah, no, and, and this process, is, but. and this is again, this is something really good to come out to a field and work on distance control. Something you can do that will help with set up cones. Have a cone at 100 feet, a cone at 125, 150, 175, 200, and work on throwing to different distances and start getting the feel. Because that's really, at the end of the day, that's what you want to have. You want to have the feel of, all right, wherever Ezra's disc is, I'm going to try and throw the first one to Ezra's disc which landed just short of it. Now I want to throw it like 10 feet further. I was a little bit further than that. Now I want to throw it a little shorter and just working on what that feels like to kind of get that dif difference uh, distance control. Now in golf, something that we worked on a lot was like the clock, yeah. right? And so like taking it back to a certain um, time on the clock, the hand, kind of. Yeah, so you can kind of feel like how far that is. 
disc golf, I don't think it's really like that. I think it is similar more to like even basketball, right? Like a basketball, when you see them shoot free throws, the, the motion that they take is very more controlled than if they were going to take a three-point jumper and get more of the body into it. So I think a lot of this is more just repetitions and feel. So we're just going to get some reps in now so you can kind of see us work through it. Go ahead and do one with the backhand here so you can kind of see. And also with the backhand too, one thing that uh, we didn't mention is watch Ezra's head. So when you do the X step and you're doing like a power drive, you want to actually rotate your head with your body because that will let you uh, get more rotation. Because if you keep your head here, it's going to be hard for you to actually get the full rotation. So you want your head to be more natural in that X step and rotate back with, your, with the disc and with your body. But with these, especially on the forehand obviously, but with the backhand, you can keep your head facing the target the whole way. You don't need to go back here and move your eye line from the target. Keep, think, your, keep your eye on the target the whole way. Yeah. I think keeping your head forward too helps kind of limit the rotation and the reach back as well. Yep. If you do reach back, look back, it's easy to get it back like he was talking about. So if I keep everything forward, it's easy to keep the disc kind of in front of me as well. And the thing is, like, I threw that pretty, like, I try, I put a decent amount of effort into it and it didn't go anywhere else. So that, that really helps with distance control. That's the nice thing, because I think a lot of times it's really easy to just juice them right. super far back. Or go the opposite direction, overcompensate, and go too soft. The other, the other thing you're going to want to work on is obviously distance control, like we've been talking about, but also angles. So get yeah. your angle control. And what I would say, too, on this, and this would be interesting what you think, is a lot of times you hear like the hula hoop, right? People talk about if you want to throw hyzer, you just lean over on top of it. If you want to throw Annie, you kind of lean back on it. I think for up shots, it's, a, it's actually the, the opposite. I don't want to, on an up shot, if I want to throw hyzer, I don't want to do this. That's going to be kind of awkward. I think this kind of goes back to my ultimate frisbee, where all I'm going to do now is I'm going to adjust it in my hand. So hyzer, I'm not going to actually lean over as drastically as I would if I was throwing like a driver, an upshot, I can just go here from this angle and release it on hyzer. And then same thing for Annie, I can go here and release on that angle for Annie. I don't have to kind of like do this to try to throw and do this to get hyzer. I can get way, I can get way better at just angle control with my wrist. And I think too, this is something that will really help scrambling. Oh, yeah. Because you're not all... A lot of times, you know, in, in the woods, you don't have the ability or the option even to bend over or lean back. You have to get creative and just stay in one spot that you all kind of forced into and then make the disc walk. Yeah, yeah so, like again, I'm going to throw three different ones. <laughs> I'm going to try to keep my body in the same position for all three, but different angles. So here's the ante up shot. Here's the flat up shot. And then here's the hyzer up shot. And so that basically by getting comfortable and being able to do that again, now obviously when you're out in the open, you can adjust a little bit more. But like we talked about, if you've got a tree next to you, if you're in the bushes and all you have is this, you want to be able to be comfortable at changing that angle in your hand to be able to still throw a shot out the gap like this or be adjusting and throw it like that. See if it works for back end. Yeah. So try for back end. Low angle. Annie. Yeah. Flat one. Yeah, and then Heiser, drop the el drop the elbow, drop the wrist. Heiser's gonna be a lot harder. That is, that is more difficult. The Heiser one's Andy definitely and flat, definitely won't. Andy and flat are good. The Heiser obviously for back ends gonna be a lot harder because you have to almost like what I said by like drop your elbow, you gotta kinda go like this here and throw it here. A little more straight. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. And that should help you out. So hopefully that uh will work on your upshots and get your upshots closer if you have any questions. Let us know in the comments, and uh, we'll see you guys in the next one. Make sure you subscribe to Ezra, subscribe to Foundation, and uh, keep slinging them discs.